Today we're talking about diabetes in cats and dogs. Diabetes symptoms may include weight loss without intention, you're not feeding less, increased thirst, they may be begging at the water bowl and you just have to fill it more often, and increased urination. In cats, that may include accidents outside of the litter box or a really full litter box that just is getting kind of flooded. In dogs, they may also be having accidents inside of the house when previously that's not normal for them, or they may be asking to go outside more frequently. The way to get this truly diagnosed is to go to your veterinarian and get their blood sugar checked or their blood glucose checked. In cats, the tricky part about that is after a car ride and almost any time a cat goes to the vet, they're gonna be a bit stressed. And cats can get something called stress hyperglycemia or a high blood sugar because of stress. So if it's a little questionable if they're truly diabetic, they may recommend sending out an additional blood test called fructosamine. And that checks the blood sugar over a longer period of time instead of just that one point. Another thing that they may be checking is the animal's urine. So one they're seeing is their sugar in the urine, are there ketones in the urine, or do they have evidence of a urinary tract infection? Because that may have very similar symptoms to diabetes. Treatment can be tough. It's a big management change. You're going to need to be giving injections at home twice daily, probably for the rest of your pet's life. And needles are something a lot of people are uncomfortable with. This is something your veterinarian should be going over with you in the hospital, and if they don't, just ask them to please help you and demonstrate on your pet the best way to do this. Once you've actually done it a couple times, most people don't find it as intimidating. So the way you're giving these injections is under the skin. Very important, you lift up, usually behind like the shoulder blades, because there's just a lot of extra skin or scruff there, and you lift up their skin and inject the needle in. You only want to use these needles and syringes once and then dispose of them by bringing them back to your veterinarian. You can do that once a month or so, just so they're not going in the trash. That's just dangerous, a sharp object and a needle. And the other factors with management to include, only give insulin if your pet has eaten. So make sure they eat their meal and then get the insulin. If they don't eat a meal, you should only give half their dose of insulin. If they skip two meals, get them checked out at the vet Make sure they're not sick for some other reason. Because if you give insulin on an empty stomach, it can lead to some pretty scary things, including vomiting, weakness or lethargy, or even seizures. And that all happens because when you give insulin on an empty stomach, blood sugar can drop too low, and hypoglycemia can be even more dangerous than having a high blood sugar. Other factors in management, you may need to get your animal on a diet plan so gradually reducing their weight, their body weight, to be a nice tone, lean body condition. And you may need to switch to a low carbohydrate diet. There are veterinary diets out there, or prescription diets, but talk to your vet about what might be best for your pet. So I hope that provides some clarity. Diabetes can be a really scary diagnosis, but it is something that does not mean that they will have a worse quality of life. I know many pets that go on to live very happy, healthy lives beyond this diagnosis. So don't panic, take a breath, contact your vet, and make sure that you have all the information.